routing options. Everything's in its own place. It's nice and tidy. And that's what I like about it. And if I exit out of this user, look, I'm back to the, to the main uh, login console, and I can actually log in back as root. And now I'm at the Unix command prompt, and I can type CLI to get back in. Show configuration. There's the configuration, and we're good to go. And as soon as you commit a configuration to running configuration, it's automatically saved, which is something to keep in mind. And that is a little bit different from Cisco, whereas you're editing the live configuration. If you make a typo, you're locked out of the router. So it's a little bit safer. It's a little bit more robust as far as that's concerned. And I think that the difference is extremely uh, evident when you when you when you look at the router, the lineage, the difference, and and I like it coming from a Cisco background. I feel that the device is sharp. I feel that the device is more stable. I feel that the configuration is clean. I'm really impressed with the stuff that you can do as far as routing. You know, in Cisco we have route maps. And especially as you progress as far as network engineering, you tend to start using access lists and route maps to do pretty much everything. You know, in, in my main data center, we have route maps on, it seems, just about everything to do a million and one things. You have route maps to advertise BGP routes. You have route maps to filter BGP routes. You have route maps to redirect traffic into a virtual routing and forwarding table, a VRF interface, uh, which has a, it's basically a, a a version of a virtual router that Juniper has where you can have two different routing tables that don't talk. Uh, you can do use routing, you know, route maps for basically for everything and I have never found them lacking in anything I've tried to do, but the staggering amount of options that you get in the Juniper settings just goes to show you that just because I didn't find them lacking doesn't mean that they that they weren't really lacking. I mean, the amount of things that you can do with the Juniper Junos is very very impressive and I'm very happy with it I wanted to show you a little run through it I'm gonna have more videos on on Junos coming up and we're gonna talk a little bit more about different features of the OS look at the web GUI we're gonna have a video I'm gonna show you the actual physical router we're gonna talk about setting up VLAN tagging because that's important setting up services because the Junos is really meant to complete with the ISR series of routers by Cisco so DHCP setting up DHCP on it setting up multiple DHCP pools for multiple VLANs if this is going to be routing VLANs setting up NAT incoming NAT port translation port overload NAT pools static NAT also setting up uh, stateful firewall IDS all those neat nifty features that most small branch offices want to run we'll look at how to do that and and see how far we get but I think you'll be very impressed with Junos as a router with the services it leaves a little bit to be dis to be desired especially compared to the Cisco ISR there are a lot of things uh, specifically that we'll talk about in the video where there were some commands on on Cisco that just do not exist on Juniper where you really just wanted to say wow you know what if I had that command it would make a big difference or it caused a little bit of an issue but I think that all in all, uh, they would be great routers to choose for uh, medium enterprises or core routers. When you start wanting to add services to them, it gets a little bit more dicey, and we'll go over that. Uh, and we'll talk about creating filter lists, or which is basically access lists, and what you can do with them, and stateful firewalls, and all that good stuff. Until next time, uh, thanks for uh, watching, and uh, hopefully we'll have something more for you uh, at a later date.